Hello and welcome back. Today we will talk about honeypots. And these honeypots, they attract hackers and not bears. So, what are honeypots even? So, honeypots are used by BitNinja as a trap to trick hackers into thinking they stumbled upon something um, as, as they could exploit or as a real service. And we distinguish between two types, um, web and port honeypots respectively, um, and they offer different protection on different fronts. When web honeypots are a file-based honeypot system, port honeypot is aimed at the um, ports of the machine. So web honeypot as a module serves as a, as a messenger. So a trap file will call this module and send the data about the request in order to catch the hacker in action, stopping them from executing malicious code or brute forcing passwords um, and just finding out who is trying to log into your admin pages and uh, logins and whatnot. So as I've mentioned, Web Honeypot is file based and in order to set up these trap files, you have two options. One of them is to create them by yourself by copying and pasting the code from our documentation site. Or the second method, which is the slightly easier one, is simply to just enable the Honeypotify setting in the configuration of our malware detection module. That will automatically replace infected files with, with the Honeypot. So if there was an infected file on your machine and something tries to call it, so let's say, for example, it was a simple backdoor that is uh, accepting communication from, from the internet. If that was replaced with a honeypot file, when the hacker tries to access it the next time and send some instructions to that file, or let's say it's a command server, um, then that server and that IP address will instantly get gray listed and the hacker will have no idea for a long time. So it's a pretty good way to fool them. And port honeypot is slightly different as it's a little bit more complicated than this. So port honeypot sets up fake ports and behind these fake ports, fake chatter services. And such as port 23, which is Telnet or port 21, which is FTP or port 53, which is the D DNS by default. Um, and on top of these always fixed ports, it also sets up a hundred random ports above port number 60500. So it's worth noting that port honeypot will first check if any of these ports are in use or not, of course. Uh, and if they are uh, being used, it will not try to honeypotify them or whatnot. So you don't have to worry about uh, your system's re normal connections would stop. Port honeypot does not automatically uh, that actually binds on these ports. Uh, rather, it creates IP tables rules to forward traffic from these ports to destination ports used by uh, this module above uh, 60,000. And on ports that it does start uh, the honeypots, scanners and exploiters will find themselves faced with a seemingly real service, as you will see in the upcoming demonstration, as the module sends response to the requests um, however, they do not know in reality it's only a fake chatter service and their IP address has been graylisted by it already. Um, so you can be prepared to see some random chatter services on your machine, um, which is pretty clever in my opinion. Setting up is pretty simple and pretty straightforward. With the web honeypot all you have to do is place the trap files or enable the honeypotify. Um, with port honeypot you do have a few configuration options. So you simply just have to open up the configuration file, which is found in slash etc slash bitninja slash port honeypot slash config dot um, And then you, you have the option to choose which ports should be used to honeypotify, which should be avoided, how many random mines it should generate, and what should be the starting port for these random mines. And it's also worth noting that BitNinja will automatically detect if you are using cPanel or Plesk on the machine and it will do not attempt to honeypotify ports that could be used by them in order to not uh, brick 
connections with CPAN or Oplask videos that would be pretty bad, of course. So you don't have to worry about compatibility issues. So let's see uh, how you can make them work and how you can configure them and let's see them in action. <laughs> 